Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about... Sorry about that. Today we're going to talk about... <sighs> Are you finished, Thunder? Thank you. Thunder is pretty excited because today's episode is all about it. Well, to be more specific, today's episode is all about severe weather. But before things get all snowy, windy, and rainy in here, let's bundle up and ask ourselves the big question. What exactly is severe weather, and how is it different from regular weather? We know that weather is a condition of the air or atmosphere on our planet. Severe weather is the same thing, only more extreme. EXTREME! But what does that mean? How do you know when weather is severe or extreme and when it isn't? Well, severe weather is any dangerous act of nature that puts people, animals, or buildings at risk. Some light rain probably wouldn't count as severe weather, but a thunderstorm with heavy rain and lightning would. Tornadoes, blizzards, hurricanes, floods, and droughts are other forms of severe weather that can be dangerous to humans. But the more you know about these weather events, the less scary they seem. Let's start with tornadoes. A tor a tornado is a fast spinning column of air that stretches all the way from a thunderstorm cloud down to the Earth's surface. With wind speeds of up to over 300 kilometers an hour, tornadoes have the power to pick up and destroy everything in their path. While not quite as windy as a tornado, blizzards are storms with blowing or falling snow, high winds of their own, and cold temperatures. Hurricanes, or typhoons, are storms with high winds and heavy rain that start over warm ocean waters and bring lots of water with them. Speaking of lots of water, let's talk flooding. Floods happen when too much rain forces streams, rivers, and lakes to overflow, sending lots and lots of water where it doesn't belong. Like your backyard. A drought is sort of the opposite. Think a lot less water, or no water at all. Droughts happen when an area doesn't receive enough rainfall, drying up rivers and lakes, killing trees, and ruining crops. All of those forms of severe weather have a big impact on the biosphere and the geosphere. How so? Let's find out. I'll conjure up some different types of severe weather to see exactly how shakeups in the atmosphere can impact the biosphere and the geosphere. Severe weather can be dangerous for people, obviously, but beyond affecting humans in the biosphere, severe weather can also affect plants and animals, too. Take a drought. After very long spells without enough rain, this nice mountain pond will become smaller, and maybe even dry up entirely. That means less habitat for the animals that live in the water, like ducks and beavers. But it also means less plant life around, because plants need water, too. And fewer plants mean less food for animals like deer and elk that feast on them. But what about the opposite problem? What about too much water in the form of heavy rain? Really strong thunderstorms can sometimes bring lightning and high winds that can damage trees, maybe breaking off some of their limbs, uprooting them, or even setting them on fire. This is bad news not only for the tree, but also for everything that lives in it. And finally, even the ground, as solid as it might seem, can be reshaped by severe weather. Strong, recurring floodwaters act like powerful rivers and can actually wear down rocky formations like mountains over time. And sometimes big flows of rainwater can cause a slope or hillside to collapse in an event called a mudslide. The atmosphere interacts strongly with the other spheres of the environment, particularly when it's cooking up severe weather. It can even move things in the biosphere and reshape the geosphere. So now you know how to tell if weather is severe or not. Ask yourself, does it put life or property at risk? Does it have a major impact on the biosphere and the geosphere? If the answer is yes, you're not dealing with normal weather patterns. Severe weather might be less common, but it has a much bigger impact on the world around you. Anything to add, Thunder? I guess that means we're done. Squeaks, where are you? Squeaks, where are you? Squeaks? Oh, there you are, Squeaks. Oh, it's okay, Squeaks. Thunderstorms can get kind of loud and maybe even a little scary sometimes. But you know what? Sometimes things that are frightening are a little less scary when we understand what causes them. And we can learn what causes things by asking questions. That's why we're so glad that we heard from our friend, four-year-old Eleanor, who asked, 
Why do lightning and thunder happen? I'm sure Squeaks would like to know. Experts called meteorologists study the science of weather, including lightning and thunder. We can use what they've learned to explain what causes these bright flashes of light and the big booms that follow. And you may not know it, but the science of what causes lightning can happen right in your own home. Have you ever walked across a fuzzy carpet and then, when you reach for a doorknob, gotten a little shock? If so, then you've been part of making a mini lightning bolt. That shock that you felt was caused by the buildup of what's known as a static electrical charge. A static electrical charge is just a little bit of electricity that stays in one place for a little while. Static electricity can build up any time two things rub together. When you walk across the carpet, your body picks up tiny bits of charge. Then, when you reach for that doorknob, these charges jump into the metal doorknob and zap! Lightning is caused by the same thing only on a much bigger scale. The kinds of clouds we see in thunderstorms have tiny bits of ice in them, and these little bits of ice bump into each other. They cause an electrical charge to build up inside the cloud. And as this charge keeps building up, it gets stronger. But there are two kinds of electrical charge. We call them positive and negative. Charges that are different from one another will attract or pull toward one another, a lot like magnets. But in our case, the charge in the cloud is negative. The negative charge in the cloud makes some spots on the ground get a positive charge. And when the charges in the cloud and the charges on the ground are just right, a bolt of lightning jumps between the cloud and the earth. And meteorologists have discovered that there are different kinds of lightning too. Some lightning goes from one part of a cloud to another, some jumps from cloud to cloud, and some goes between the sky and the ground. But it's all caused by a moving electrical charge. And all lightning is hot. Really hot. And that heat is what causes thunder. Thunder starts with the fact that air is made of tiny particles. When these little particles get heated up, they start to move around more quickly. So when the hot lightning bolt suddenly moves through the air, its heat makes the air particles around it all excited. All those particles of suddenly hot air start to move around quickly. They push hard against the cooler air around them. That air then flies away really fast from where the lightning was with a lot of energy. Our ears hear this movement of the air particles as a loud bang or crackle. That's thunder. So now you know. Lightning happens when an electrical charge builds up inside of a cloud and moves to an opposite charge. And thunder happens when the heat from lightning causes the particles that make up air to push away from the lightning bolt. And remember, when you're not sure about something, ask questions. It just might make you feel better. Thanks for asking, Eleanor. And if you have a question for any of us here at the fort, let us know by leaving a comment or emailing us at kidsatthescishow.com. Until next time.